Space is a very dangerous place for humans. We have developed the technology to be able to send humans to Mars, but we have not figured out how to keep humans alive on the trip. Our bodies have evolved to survive in a 1G or 1 gravity environment. When we send humans into space into a microgravity environment, that just means very little gravity, our bodies have trouble adjusting to that new environment. There are effects on several of the body systems, but it has the largest impact on the circulatory system, the neurovestibular system, and bone density. The neurovestibular system is the system that connects your brain with the semicircular canals in your ears and visual inputs from your eyes. In other words, it's the system that helps to orient your body so you know whether you're standing, sitting, or moving around. When astronauts go into space, they are thrust forward at 17,500 miles per hour. When they finally reach space eight and a half minutes later and experience microgravity, many astronauts experience space sickness. They feel like they are still tumbling forward when they aren't. It's very similar to those people who get motion sick in the car. The body's reaction to these conflicting signals? You vomit. Bone density is another issue. Astronauts who stay in space for just six to eight months will have as much bone loss as an elderly person from age 50 to 60. This condition is called osteoporosis. Another impact is on the circulatory system. A condition that astronauts get is called puffy head birdling syndrome. On Earth, the heart is designed to pump blood against gravity to the head. In microgravity, the heart continues to pump blood to the head, but there isn't gravity to force the blood back down. So, fluids build up in the head.